tell you, thank you plenty. We, the Labino people, and Labino women, and Labino men, and our children. Me, who are they gone? You come here before I come here in my room. So when nobody tell you thank you, many land you some people tell you thank you. Plenty. And we tell you today, the God where you said, continue and serve that God. Everywhere you go, the light will shine upon you. The chief, the governor, the, the so all the Navida people we are our children, the women, we put them down on you. They down and I'm not telling you take a common but a beating in the world. They down how you will love your love girlfriend. Now how you will love them. <laughs> La Vida people guide you today. Everywhere the first and war, when you go there, people will go there. Amen. Because you are men who can look back. On the 7th of January 1998, former ECOMO Commander Lieutenant General Victor Malu was honored by the civilians of Liberia and honored with a chieftaincy title. This is a reception and a speech. The organizers of this occasion representing the Interfaith Council of Liberia, the Interest Group of Liberia, the University of Liberia Students' Union, the Liberian Women Initiative, the Council of Chiefs of Liberia, that I'm told I'm now a member. <laughs> The former chairman, Ellen T.J., the former chairman, Council of State, your excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, the honorable minister and my close friend, Roosevelt Johnson, <laughs> it doesn't too kind to what I had a general these days, <laughs> my colleagues of the Ekoma High Command, distinguished librarians, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm not able to speak coherently, it's because I'm overwhelmed. I am just a soldier. I have been in this service for the past 31 years. And to tell you that it's the first time I've been so honored, we explain why I might not be able to talk coherently. I came to Liberia in June of 92, as the organizers had already explained to you. As the chief of staff of the ECOMOG, I was also the director of operations. It was at that time, or during that time, that we had the octopus operation. For the first time of my long years of service, I stood at a point at Paul River Bridge, I saw what is called refugees in distress. I was wearing dark glasses. For the first time in my remembrance, tears came out of my eyes. When I saw displaced Liberians coming, some carried in wheelbarrows, some carried in some form of makeshift arrangement that I couldn't understand. From that day on, I understood why I was sent to this place. I had not been a politician, so I didn't very much know too much about Liberia. 
In any case, you didn't know too much about Nigeria either. <laughs> but having come here to serve as an officer at a very high level, and to see how a people, a nice set of people, can go through the type of tremor that you went through, I knew it was absolutely necessary for somebody elsewhere to do whatever it took to help bring peace to this country. <laughs> well, we did our best in those days. We were able to save the city of Monrovia despite the effort of the other people to take the government by force. I was confident when I was leaving this place that we had secured at least the city of Monrovia. We had regained the control of Kutana Port. We had taken over the control of Kata. I'm saying this because some of the people that went alongside me are here. I'm referring specifically to General Roosevelt Johnson. We did not complete the task before I was made to leave the country on reassignment just like I'm going now. Throughout my three years away from Liberia, there was no single one week that I did not get in contact with Liberia to find out, to find out how the situation was going. I wrongly assumed that the situation had improved until suddenly we started seeing pictures on the television following the April 6 crisis. I felt very bad that the Moravia that we had preserved like an egg could be allowed to be destroyed the way it was. Even at this point, I never in my imagination think that I will ever come back to Liberia because I was commanding a division in the army, the most active division, so to say, because we had a little bit of war with another country somewhere. And I thought I was doing well, so I, did, I never expected I could be moved to come to Liberia. By some stroke of misfortune or fortune, I was posted to this place. So on my arrival here, I came with a wealth of experience of the Liberia crisis. I'm saying this so that when people try to talk of Victor Malo as if I'm a magician, I think one of the reasons is that I had a better knowledge of the crisis in Liberia. I had a better insight of it. I had some part in what had taken place, so I knew where to start. So I'm saying this so that we don't marginalize what my predecessors had done. We were able to achieve peace in Liberia. Thank God for that. It was not just because Ekomo fought to bring peace. The greatest commendation goes to the people of Liberia. The type of support we received, the type of commendation that kept coming to us. In fact, at times I used to look at myself and wonder whether I'm the same person. Because I never felt we were doing anything extra other than doing my day-to-day -day job that my government was paying me for. But Liberia showed tremendous support. I want to thank all Liberians for the support they gave to us. If I were to be the laziest man, I think I would have been encouraged to work hard to assist in bringing peace to Liberia. Thank God we have been able to achieve that. Lest I forget before I get into my usual type of talk, I want to thank you for this honor. It's not, I wasn't expecting to come and address so many people. An honor is an honor. If I had four people here, I've never been so honored. I owe you people all my respect, and I'll remember this throughout my years of service. I want to take the, this opportunity to apologize to Nigerians that we would have offended in the course of our job. Military job will tell people who are not students of the College of the Magnet Conception. We use the most foul language. That's the language we understand. We are very good. That's why we are soldiers. So when I talk to you, I talk very bad about Liberia. In the passion of my duty, I didn't mean any hatred for Liberia. 
I had the highest respect for Liberians. On the 19th of July, when the election was taking place, I had the opportunity of visiting almost all the polling centers within the city center of Monrovia. And my admiration and respect for Liberians increased tenfold from that day. I have observed elections in my country, Nigeria, and elsewhere within the South region. I have never seen a people that were so disciplined in the conduct of an election like the Nigerians. At the end of the election, Mr. President won. Not mind about whatever statement anybody has made about April not assisting anybody. Firstly, we are not in a position to assist anybody. The international community, the international observers were breathing on our leg. We had our reputation at stake. So there was no way we could have assisted anybody to cheat in the election. Ours was to ensure that the elections were made free, fair, and transparent so that the way we talk would have come out. I'm happy to have achieved that. As I'm preparing to leave this country in the next 48 hours, I want to tell you, Liberians, that wherever I go, in whatever capacity I'll be, my thoughts, my prayers, my spirit will be with Liberians. I am not going with a very happy mind in the sense that my command as the ECOMOR, with me as the first commander, we did not quite entirely achieve what we have tasked ourselves to achieve. To a large extent, we achieved what the Air Force authorities mandated us to do here. But if we have been listening to my bad language, I have been promising Liberia that at the time when someone would be leaving Liberia, we would have made sure that Liberia as a country was much more arms free than the rest of the member countries of the Air Force. And we intended to do that through military operations, not through begging anybody. From September, or actually, from 7th of August, 1997, is that correct? Yes. From 7th of February, 1997, when we started embarking on the military operation to recover arms in Liberia, the exercise has been more, the success of the exercise has been more tremendous than we even imagined. The arms we got were much better in shape, in quality, and the serviceability. We had intended to continue with that operation up to the last day we would have been leaving Liberia. Unfortunately, the government of Liberia did not allow us to do this. I am not reporting the government of Liberia to you, but I am trying to say why we did not achieve our target that we have set for you people, the good people of Liberia. We also did not get the opportunity of restructuring the armed forces of Liberia that we had, we had promised to create, that we get the respectability, to get the acceptance of Liberians, whether you came from where, whichever part of Liberia. I don't like calling tribes. We didn't get that opportunity also. After having spent seven years in Liberia, we are happy that we have achieved the peace up to this level. My fervent prayers when I'm out of here is that there is good governance for that peace to be maintained. I was particularly happy to hear the Honorable Oscar Queer emphasizing on Liberia being responsible for maintaining peace. Yes, that is not something anybody from outside can do for you. The people outside, the international community, and especially the government of the United States assisted us in more measures than I can stand here and explain to you. If we had just sat here waiting for manna to fall from heaven, it might not have come down until now. We got the logistic support that enabled us to achieve the success. We are grateful to those countries, specifically we are grateful to the government of the United States, the Netherlands, the German government, the British, the French, the Japanese, for all their support all that support that enabled us to reach this point where we are.
We had a mediation committee here that was formed by the ambassadors resident in Liberia. I cannot tell you the effectiveness of what they did or the contribution towards the achievement of peace in Liberia. Unfortunately, Ambassador Malam has just left before my speech, but uh, Ambassador uh, Joshua Eroa, the Nigerian ambassador is here, who was the chairman of that mediation committee. I have nothing but praises for the committee, the invaluable work. In fact, they spent most of their lives consulting with the Roosevelt Johnson, the and the other. <laughs> so that we have achieved peace in Liberia is not just the effort of the Ecomob, it's first and foremost the effort of the Liberians who had suffered so much and decided there should be peace. And that peace, we hope and pray to God that whoever is at the leadership will help preserve it. So that we don't go back and start hearing about people disappearing only the, uh, the tosos are surfacing with us on vital fight. So on the final note, I want to bid the people of Liberia goodbye, but I want to say that the honor you are giving me today will live with me for as long as I live. I don't think my country will ever honor me this way. If they were to do that, they would have done it in the past, uh, maybe one out of those 31 years. So I owe the people of Liberia my highest gratitude, and I want to say thank you to Liberia, thank you to the Liberia.